thank you for joining me and welcome to a whole new build series. So this is going to be the third of probably six guitars that I'm making for the Italy Guitar Show and you'll probably know that if you've seen any of my previous videos. So I've already completed the build using olive and rosewood. I've got the walnut and ebony build underway at the moment which is about to be finished. And for this build I thought it's probably time that I start to use some colour because I want to do a fairly good variety of guitars so that when I go to the show people can see the types of things that they can order from me. So let's take a quick look at the wood and then we're going to dive in and do what we always do, just start building and I'll talk as I work. For the neck and fretboard I'm going with is a Brano fretboard which I used on my GGBO guitar and I promised myself I was going to use Zebrano more because it is really, although it's, it's tricky to work with, it does look beautiful when it's done and I know it's going to work well with what I've got planned for this guitar. And the neck which I already started yesterday because I've got my carbon rods and truss rod channel done is single piece walnut neck. Walnut's kind of become old faithful for me for neck woods because it's great to work with, it's stable, it's hard, it's just a really good wood for using on necks and it goes with so many other different woods whether you're contrasting or complementing a fretboard it works with so many. So for the body I thought it's probably about time that I use some flame maple it's mostly because I'm going to go with some colour this time round but also because I finally found some pieces that I like it's quite hard to come by here particularly interesting flame maple so you probably can't see it on the video but that's a very nice piece and then for my body wood single solid piece of Ockham which I use on all of these guitars now. I love it. What I'm also going to use, because again this will be a double band guitar, is a golden brown pearl double binding because it's going to complement rather than contrast the finish that I'm planning to go on the flame maple. So that's the plan, so let's dive in and get the neck made. I'm just going to mark up the neck shape here so I can, uh, I can get it cut out. So what I thought it would be good to do for this video is to talk through wood choices and wood selection because it's such an interesting and fun part of guitar building choosing the wood that you're going to use and I've never really talked about it that much apart from from an aesthetic point of view plus I can talk about it for about 10 hours but <laughs> I'll, I'll keep it as concise as I can and up until this year I was really into the idea of multi-laminates and that was predominantly because I was using single piece bodies and I liked the idea of using multi-laminate necks and contrasting different types of wood. But now that I've got my journeyman design finalised I've decided that all of those guitars are going to have figured tops. But to keep the guitars looking nice and simple I've decided that a single piece neck is the way to go if I'm going to use figured tops. So for single piece necks the things that I looked at the properties were strength, stability, weight and tonal properties of the wood. And I've landed on three woods that I think will be, or they are now, my go-to woods for neck wood. Okay, so let's get this cut and then I'll tell you what they are. So Walnut, Sapili and Olive are my three chosen neckwoods. Those are the ones that I'm using as my go-to neckwoods for all of my bills. And there were plenty that fit the bill in terms of strength and stability, but for the way that those three feel under an oil finish, because I just do a natural oil finish on all of the necks, and for aesthetics, between the three different shades, the three different colours, one of them will always work well with whatever fretboard I want to use. And in this case, it's Sobrano, so I'm going with the walnut. I'm just going to get this edge dead straight because I'm going to use this edge as my reference edge for all my measuring for the frets. So let's have a talk about fretboard wood. So for fretboards, I'll use pretty much any hardwood that is really pretty. But I do have a couple of rules that I always stick to when it comes to matching or pairing fretboards with bodywood. So the first is that I won't use a highly figured top and a highly figured fretboard irrespective of how nice they are individually because they never work as well together as they do individually. And the second rule I tend to use is that I want the fretboard to either match binding if I'm doing binding on a guitar and if I'm not going to match the binding then one of the main two colours in the fretboard I like to match to the bodywood. 
So I'll we'll just finish fret slotting the rest of this and also I'm going to mark the start and end of the fret border and where the nut slot's going to be and then we'll have a chat about body wood and top wood. OK, that's all slotted. So the two ends do need to come off but I'll cut it down roughly to shape before I do that because that way if I get any chip out when I'm cutting it to shape it'll chip off the ends that I'm getting rid of anyway. So let's have a chat about body wood. The main thing for me with the body wood was the weight that aesthetically it works <clears throat> with the tops and the colours that I'm planning to use and also that I can source it in dimensions where I can make single piece bodies. That was one of the things that's really important to me is that all of the bodies that I use are one single piece. So the Okame really was a standout winner for me right from the start. I think the last journeyman build, the walnut and ebony one I've just done, the body has come in at two kilos and the neck is just over half a kilo. So combined just over two and a half kilos which is about six pounds which I'm totally happy with for a solid body electric guitar. I think that's absolutely fine. It also looks really nice whether it's finished naturally or coloured so it goes with the tops that I'm planning to use. So for all of the dark tops I use they'll all get a natural finish and for all of the lighter tops like the poplar and maple that I'm planning colours on even if they're vibrant colours they'll still be fairly dark. It's also something that's not particularly widely used which I like for all of these. I mean that's the same reason I like the um, the walnut and the olive for the neck because there's really very few people, there's nobody that I've seen using olive in fact, but there's very few manufacturers that use walnut. There's more that use sapili for the necks, but I think Music Man is probably the only one I know of that uses Okame for bodies. So that brings us on to the tops. Tops I think similarly to fretboards, if it's beautiful and it's interesting and I like it, I'll use it. What I tend to do is to go for things that look different and original. So even if it's a, a wood like flamed maple, I tend to really like the um, the grain patterns that are not the traditional flamed patterns. And that's really because I like the idea of every guitar just being as unique as it can be. I like the idea that I can't replicate something I can get fairly close but each guitar is going to look unique because I like to choose the wood that is slightly different. Just in case you're wondering what I'm doing I'm marking my cut lines in tape because it's really hard to see pencil lines on Zebrano on dark wood generally I do this. So should I weigh in on the tone wood debate? I don't know. I'll give you my thoughts on it but don't hate me in the comments. My philosophy on tone wood for electric guitars right from the get-go has been to listen to what everyone thinks but believe nobody just to make up my own mind and to be honest I haven't done enough testing and research and built enough guitars to have definitively made up my mind but what I do think is that I'm absolutely not gonna just believe my favorite youtuber because they say one way or the other it does or doesn't make any difference I'm gonna get this cut and then we'll come back to this Before we continue on that conversation, and I alienate everybody, let's get the headstock down to 15mm and just drill the access hole for the truss rod before we get the fretboard on. Let's pop the fretboard on and get back to what we were talking about. So here comes my two cents and the bit where you can hate me or not. I already firmly believe that the way a guitar resonates and sustains is definitely affected by the choice of wood. But when it comes to how much the wood affects or colours the tone in terms of brightness and darkness and warmth, I'm totally, totally undecided. But what I will have for the first time ever in the next couple of months is a whole bunch of four or five of these guitars that are identical in every way except for the type of wood that's used. So at the point that I have all of these done and finished I'm going to sit down and record them all back to back. That experiment is the one that I'm going to use to base my decision on how much the type of wood actually colours the tone of the guitar for a solid body. 
So the principle that I've used up until this point is just to always find out what the tonal characteristics are of the wood that I've chosen. Because acoustic guitar makers have already done all of the legwork for us, so I always think that so long as you have the information you can make an intelligent decision about what to do with it or even to ignore it. So there you go, I found a, I found a way of sitting on the fence, or at least delaying it. Okay, so while that's drying, let's go ahead and prep the bodywood. So I have the flames maple already planed down to six millimetres. Actually, it's just under six millimetres because the binding is six mil thick. I want the finished body to be between 42 and 43 mil thick. So I'm going to take my rough slab of Ockeme and I'm going to plane and flatten it down to about 37 millimetres, which will leave me a bit of margin for sanding and then the whole thing should be spot on. Okay, let's get this bit prepped. Okay, that's ready to go. This is what I mean about the Okame. It just every piece that I prep, just beautiful. It's time to unclamp the neck. Okay, so this should be nice and solid now. Okay, that hasn't moved at all. Let's get the fretboard flushed up and take care of this transition and then we can think about radiusing. I'm going to go ahead and do this and then get the fretboard radius. I'm going to go with the 12 inch radius. So that's the radius done just to a rough grit. So I'm going to get the fret dot markers installed and the side dots installed and then I'll polish the fretboard up. In really great news for the channel, I think I have a um, a really good guitarist who is interested in my guitars and what I do is interested in having a guitar and also in helping me out with doing some sound demos on my video which is going to be so good so hopefully I can do an intro to to him on the channel soon okay let's get those drilled Okay, that's sanded up to 5,000, so I think I'm ready to recut the fret slots to depth and get the frets in. Once this is done, I'll leave the neck until the body's made. So I think the next thing that I'll do is just to get the top, the flame maple top, jointed and glued, and then I can leave that to dry while I'm making the body. First thing is to get the centre joint perfectly jointed. Okay, that looks really good. Let's get that glued and while that's drying we can uh, cut out the body. Let's get started on the body. So this I think is the prettiest side, so that's going to be the back of the guitar. So I'm going to place where I want the guitar outline on here, draw my centre line, transfer it to the other side and then I can work from the top. So I think I'd like this part of the grain. I think I want the bottom of the guitar to be about here. I'm going to do the centre line first. Just quickly draw this on to make sure I'm happy with where everything sits. Okay, completely happy with that. So I've got my centre line marked, transfer that to the top and then I'll just measure how far up I want it to start and then I'll put the template on again. So I'll get this cut out and I'll get it down to final dimensions and I'll get it absolutely perfect before I put the top on because the edge of this I'm going to be using a template route a bit to flush up the top round the sides. So it's a lot easier if I just get that right before I put the top on.
been a couple of hours because I've been getting the edges of the guitar completely smooth so that that's down to final dimensions which means that my top has had time to dry so we're all ready to get this marked up and cut and then I can attach it to the body. Let's pop this on and it will be ready for me to work in the morning. Okay, that's all as it should be. So let's go and flush up the edges and then I can think about getting the neck pocket done. So let's get the neck pocket marked out. And if I can get this and the double binding done today, I'll be pretty happy. So I don't think I've talked about this before, but the neck pocket itself, how far the neck sits into the body, isn't something that's just random. It's positioned where it is for a few reasons. So if you're designing your own guitar, one of the things to think about is obviously the upper fret access. So even though this looks like a single cut, the neck meets the body where this cutaway is around about the 18th fret. And also for the woods that I use, that's how far in the neck needs to be in order for the guitar to balance so that there's no neck dive. And the last part's how much you feel like you're reaching to play open chords. So if you're designing your own guitar, that's one of the really important things to think about is how deep you want that neck pocket to be. Anyway, let's go ahead and get this one cut out. OK, perfect. I can tell from the clearance on the fretboard and where my dots line up, that that's where I want it as well, which is good. So let's get these ends tidied up and I can do the binding. I'm going to approach this the same way I always do, which is to get the binding fitted perfectly before I do any bonding. So this is a celluloid binding, which means that I can use the acetone method to bond it, which is a really nice way of doing it. It's my preferred way of doing it. If I was gluing it, I'd have to worry about getting off all of the glue residue to make sure it doesn't affect my uh, colouring the body at all. Wow, that looks beautiful. I'm really, really happy with uh, the way that that looks. There's no gaps at all to go around and fill, which is really nice, but I do find that the celluloid heats up and moulds to the channel much better than ABS plastic. So if you're thinking about doing binding yourself, particularly if it's your first, perhaps look for a celluloid binding rather than ABS. That would be my advice. The last critical job is to get the bridge position placed and to get the string through holes done. So let's do that now. And that's dead on. I'm really happy with all those. Now that the neck pocket is done and the bridge is placed, that's the really critical stuff. So everything else is downhill from now on. I'm going to do a video on pickup placement because I've actually got a guitar that I've routed out, a guitar body that I've routed out all the way through here. And I tested lots of different positions for where I wanted my pickups to be and I recorded them. And I know the fashionable thing seems to be talking about tone wood, but moving your pickups back and forth along the scale length of the guitar makes a difference that anybody will hear, so where these are set is not by accident. I thought I'd just touch on the pickup cavity depth for a moment. So if I'm using humbucker pickups and I've got a bridge that's between 8 and 10 millimeters in height and I've got no neck break angle, then the depth of the cavities that I need in order for the pickups to be at the correct height when I'm setting it up 
is at least 20 millimeters. Now for my guitars the bridges are 8 millimeters high at their lowest settings so I've done 22 millimeter deep cavities on mine because the humbuckers are going to sit pretty deep into the guitar. And I know that when I start to wind the humbuckers down to get the correct distance from the string height that's how deep those are going to need to be without them bottoming out. So that's probably my best advice if you're going to use a 10 millimeter high bridge go for 20 millimeter routes if you're going to use an 8 millimeter high bridge like the hip shot style bridges go for 22 millimeter deep. So next I'm going to get my tone and volume and switch marked up. I'll do what I always do which is to drill them all the way through from the top and then I'll flip it over and arrange the cavity around where I've drilled those holes. Let's pop these in while I draw around with my template. So once again subject to lots of sanding that's the construction done on the body. So now I can just mark on where the neck heel meets the body and I can move on to carving the neck. But I have just realised I've forgotten <laughs> I've forgotten to drill the holes for the neck. I'll do those once I've carved the neck because I've geared myself up for it now. Okay that's the taper marked so I'm marking the nut line just because that's going to be where I go down for the first taper and the 15th at this end. I'm happy that's dead flat and straight. I can do the mark up for the facets now. That's the facets done so I can now start doing the final shaping with sandpaper. So that's done, it feels beautiful, it's a perfect C and that's what I'm sticking with for these guitars. It's just, I think, the uh, the most comfortable shape that there is. I know that's all um, highly individual but for my guitars that's what they're going to be. I've just drawn a couple of pencil lines on here and I'll just... <laughs> that's Todd at Sweet Tea. <coughs> So I've drawn a, so I put a couple of pencil lines on here. So I'm just going to start working my way up and blending in the neck with the headstock, and then I'll do the same on the heel. And then we can take a look at the finished product. Okay, let's do the test. Yep. That feels exactly how it should. It's funny you get a couple of guitars into building a design and you you remember instantly what it is that they should feel like and I know what journeyman should feel like now, which I love. That's awesome. And it's light. I've just I just weighed this one and it came in at 2.6 kilos, so it's the lightest one yet. Not by much, um, but that's a really respectable weight. Okay, let's give you a look. The only thing is I don't think you can see very well the flame maple on here so I'm going to I'm going to put it at a couple of different different angles and hopefully you will catch the the grain at some point. I'm itching to get some color on it to be honest and let's spin it. I'm really happy with how the bindings come out and of course the Okame body. I mean it just each one of these just comes out really beautiful such good wood. So there we have it. Next steps. Well I've got to get the finishing video and sound demo for the walnut build up. Then I've got to get the colouring, the finishing and the sound demo for this one. I have a replacement, I've got a plan to replace the um, olive slimline telly build that I needed to replace because that one got water damaged. I also need to start the next build for this one which is going to be a poplar build and it's going to be a P90 version. And then somewhere in amongst all of that is the videos that I'm doing with Todd for the Strat build. So we're quite a way into it, it's just that you guys haven't seen any of that yet. So it took a while to get this video out because I've been having some work done on the shop. I've got some new doors and stuff in so that I can work through the winter, but I've got quite a lot of content that's already in progress. So I should have a fair few videos coming out over the next few months, which is good. So as always, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate all of the support and all of the comments that you guys give me. And hopefully I'm going to have a new episode of something very soon.